there I go. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing tonight? <laughs> Welcome to our Monica Sunset Worship Night. I'm just going to say a word of prayer. Before I do, just please notice the QR codes posted on the pillars around. If you scan those, you'll have the lyrics to the song, so you can sing along if you don't know them. All right, so let us all pray together. If we could just bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this night, Lord God. Thank you for bringing us through another week. Thank you for just allowing us to be in this beautiful setting to worship you, standing in front of your creation, standing in front of something so beautiful, Lord God. I ask that you would just allow us to release in this moment, allow us to all take a deep breath and to just be in this moment with you. Clear our minds, Lord God. Clear our hearts with nothing but you and your presence and your glory, Lord God. Again, overwhelm us today, Lord. Allow us to release any inhibitions that, that we're holding that would cause us to not be able to fully surrender to you tonight, Lord God, that would cause us to feel pent up and built up, Lord. I pray for release and freedom in this place right now, God. I thank you for every single person in this room, and I ask that you would just expose whatever is on our hearts right now before you, Lord God, and I pray that you would see us, that you would touch us, Lord God, and that you would fill us up with your presence, Lord, so that it radiates over this whole campus and over this whole island, Lord God. I ask that chains would break tonight, Lord, and that there would be deliverance, that there would be clarity, Lord God, and there would just be a heavy sense of intimacy with you, Lord, tonight, even if it's someone's first time feeling that, God. We invite you into this worship, and we're just here to bring you glory, Lord. Thank you for this family we have around us, Lord, and it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 
not despise the cross for he made your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our faith Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, who in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of peace. So, hi, welcome. Welcome everyone who's been here before. Welcome everyone who's not been here before. Are there any first time people out here? Hey, there's one. I know there's a bunch of other ones that didn't want to raise their hands, but that's okay. So we're gonna sing a bunch of songs tonight. Feel free to sing, feel free to dance. Um, our president, John, is gonna come up and do a message at some point. He might even break dance, but uh, that, that's not for me to decide. Um, but feel free, whatever you feel like doing, and join on in. He shames every idol. He ranks with that rival. He goes by the name of Jehovah. goes running, he goes by the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. Oh 
fights your battles. Jehovah Nisi 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 fights your battles. Jehovah Jireh meet your need. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Jireh meet your need. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Jehovah needs to fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. All the hate. Jehovah Jireh meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Jehovah Nisi fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh meet your needs. Be your peace. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Of 
are faithful to your promise. You are strong when I am weak. Oh, when I'm standing in your presence, I have everything I need. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord.
sound of heaven touching the earth. The sound of heaven touching the earth. Spirit breaker.
sometimes, you know, we always go to God and we ask him for something or we, we're in need of something and we're always in need, but how often do we just shower love on him? Like we would do to our best friend or to our significant other, like, you're so great, you're so wonderful, I love you. When you do this, I feel this way, just everything about you is amazing. This is what that song is. So I just encourage us to make it really, really, really personal. Talk, as you sing these lyrics, talk, uh, direct them at him. Amen. And when you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Nothing matters more than just the things you're at. Never stop. Oh, you'll live without you, Jesus. We love you. Can't get enough. Oh, this is for you, Jesus.
scripture. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 5 today. I'm going to be doing the first few verses. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament in the Bible. It's the second half of this beautiful story of how God loves each and every one of us so much that he would go above and beyond anything any person has ever done for us. So, Let me read our scripture for today, and then I'm going to give you guys a little bit of backstory. It says, now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted Because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to say a quick prayer, and I'll tell you about this Jesus. Lord God, I just pray that today that you would speak through me, that you would use this sound system, that you would use this voice of mine, that you would use these words that I'm going to say today, God, to tell everyone here who you are. God, I pray that you would share your character with each and every person here today, that we would see who you are and what you want for us, how you want us to live, and how much you love each and every one of us. In your name we pray, amen. So, a little bit of backstory. If you're not familiar with scripture, again, I said Matthew's the first book and the second half of the Bible, the New Testament. So some of the stuff you missed from the Old Testament, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means each and everything that you see around you, all of these things that we live in, this beautiful sunset that has just tucked below the horizon. (laughs) The sun's gone, but he has risen. Amen? (laughs) All of that was made by God. Each and every one of you was knitted together in your mother's womb by God. Each and every one of us are beautiful special, beloved creations of a beautiful, loving, and special creator. And in the beginning, God intended us to be in a relationship with him. God made these folks called Adam and Eve, and he said, I made you because I love you. And I want you wholly and honestly to love 
me back. All I need you to do is listen to what I say because I have your best interests at heart. Now, of course, Adam and Eve did not listen to what he had to say. Um, he gave them one rule and they broke it like as soon as possible. <laughs> and that is when sin entered the world. Now, if you've heard the word sin before, um, it may sound kind of scary. Let me explain what that means. The English word sin is an archery term. Do we have any archers out here? Anybody? Okay. All right, I see you. So it's an archery term. It means missing the mark. If you've ever seen a bullseye, you know that there's a lot of little circles and then there's that little dot in the middle. If you don't hit that bullseye, that dot in the middle, you have sin. You have missed the mark. So it doesn't just mean doing something wildly wrong, like shooting an arrow while people are downrange and accidentally hitting a person. That's really bad. <laughs> it, it means you didn't do it exactly right. And that's an important concept I want y'all to understand because I can't speak for everyone here, but I cannot necessarily empathize with people who have committed what we call really bad sins. Like, I've never killed anybody that I know of, but I know that I'm not perfect. And I think nobody here is going to raise their hand when I ask that question, but is anybody here perfect? Because in Romans 3.23 it says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we have that God created the heavens and the earth. We have that we, as humanity, sin. We became imperfect. And when that sin came into the world, we were separated from our perfect God. Because God is perfection. God does not tolerate sin in his presence. I think we can empathize with that in a way. We don't want to be in the presence of sin. It's uncomfortable when things are going wrong. It's uncomfortable when we don't do something completely right. It's uncomfortable when that test grade comes back and it's not what we wanted it to be. So we have a perfect God who insists on perfection, an impossible standard that none of us could ever meet. You might say, John, that sounds hard. <laughs> I can't be perfect. I've already not been perfect, so I never will be perfect. Even if I never sinned again, I'd still be imperfect. I agree with you. <laughs> I'm going to sin again in the future. That's unfortunately the truth. I'm not a perfect man. I'm a sinful man just like everyone else. But God had a plan. And that's when we come to the New Testament. That's when we come to Jesus. So what I read to you was the very first words that Jesus preached once he began his ministry. He preached these words shortly after he had his 40-day and 40 night fast in the desert where he wrestled against the devil himself and came out on top. And it was through knowledge of scripture and through knowledge of his faith and his status as the one true God that Jesus was able to make it through that. As many of you probably know, CSA had a fast this last week and I'll say I definitely could not have done 40 days and 40 nights. Not without the Lord's power, anyways. So I want to explain to you what Jesus is really saying here, because something that you'll come to understand about this Jesus is that he speaks things that are good on the surface, but there's always a second level to what Jesus is saying. So let's go through these attributes of Christianity. They call them the Beatitudes. I always think of that as an attitude that I should be having. The first one is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, you first hear this and you think maybe Jesus is condemning the wealthy. And he does that in other parts of scripture, but what he's talking about here is not poor in assets. We're not talking about poor in the number in your bank account, which I think we can all empathize with right now. He's talking about poor in spirit. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? It means to be humble, to acknowledge that we are flawed. These are the very first words that Jesus spoke. And he's telling us that we need to come before God and acknowledge that we are not perfect. That we never will be perfect and that we just have to be humble about that. So this is the spirit of humility that Jesus is calling us towards. It's a spirit of honesty about who we are, about the state of our hearts. 
And you're going to see that this is a set of instructions that Jesus is giving people in order to get to know who he is. So the first step in getting to know Jesus is accepting that you're not perfect and admitting that before the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So you've already got the kingdom of heaven, so that's pretty good. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now Jesus definitely would agree that we should be comforting those who have suffered a loss. We should be comforting those who have suffered a loss. That is something that is in the character of Christianity. But we should also mourn the sinful state of our hearts. See, the first step is admitting that we're not perfect. And the second step is recognizing that that's not ideal. (laughs) It's not good that we have sinful hearts. It's not good that sometimes we have desires that are against the good of others, against the good of ourself, and against the will of God. So blessed are those who mourn, yes, but blessed are those who mourn the broken condition of themselves. So we've got the kingdom of heaven now. We've got the Lord's comfort. Next it says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now I know we're all very meek, very demure here, So we've already got this one locked down. But what does it mean to be meek? I know it rhymes with weak, but that's not exactly what it means. Being meek means recognizing that there is a strength more powerful than our own. Recognizing that we can accomplish more working through God's strength than we can through our own. So we restrain ourselves, we restrain our own strength so that we might allow God's strength to work through us. So first, we're going to accept that we are sinful. Second, we're going to accept that we don't want it to stay that way. And third, we're going to accept that we're not going to be able to fix that on our own, that we need God's strength in order to repair this relationship. Next it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, I know the past few days I have been hungering and thirsting, sometimes for righteousness, other times for one of the wraps from Glover's. If you haven't had one of those yet, y'all should check that out because they are phenomenal. I get it with all the hot peppers, onions, and terracotta sauce. But what Jesus is calling us to thirst for is righteousness. Now, if you were at the last vet Bible study, Uh, We talked about righteousness and what it means to be righteous. It's one of the things that we're called to as Christians. So in the context of these instructions that Jesus is giving us, it's telling us that we need to use God's strength in order to pursue righteousness. It has to be something that you want. I'm telling you all this because I want you to want that righteousness, you need to hunger and thirst after it like you have been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, just like you would hunger and thirst for some food and some water. God calls us to chase after righteousness with that level of zeal, that level of passion, that level of necessity. So we need to recognize that we're sinful. We need to admit that we don't want it to continue to be that way. We need to rely on God's strength and allow him to give us that hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you follow these steps, you have come to know Jesus. But that's the first step. That's the first step in the Christian walk. So if you have not accepted Jesus into your life, I want you to think and meditate about this message up to this point, because these are the steps that you need to take if you want to come to know Jesus, if you want him to be Lord of your life, if you look in your heart and you see that imperfection, just like I do every day, and you say, Lord, I want you to change me. I want to hunger and thirst for your righteousness. This is where I want you to stop and think about what the Lord can do in your life. If you've already come to know the Lord, Jesus has a few instructions here for you as well. He says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God is the most merciful of us all, because God has done no wrong, and yet he chooses to forgive the wrongs that we have done against him. 
when we put that towards Jesus' name. And if God, who has done nothing wrong, is going to forgive us, well, surely it is in our character as followers of Jesus to forgive one another as well. I'm a youngest sibling, so I have a lot of grudges from when I grew up. If you are a sibling at all, you probably can think of some of the things that I mean. But even that relationship, even relationships that are as difficult as family, the Lord can put mercy. The Lord can insert mercy into your hearts. And we want to be merciful towards other people by bringing them to Jesus. And then it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So once you have accepted Jesus, once you have begun to show mercy in your life, it's time for you to start chasing some of those sins out of your life. I know that, like each and every one of us, I struggle with temptations every day. And I also know that when I was fasting and I, when I was praying and reading in the scripture an extra three hours a day, I felt no temptation. Praise God for that because it just shows that when you come into a closer relationship with God, that he is going to pull that sin out of your life. If you give him the time, if you give him the energy, he will work in your life. Next up, it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Now, peacemakers, obviously, we as Christians want to reduce conflict in the world. We want people to be at peace with one another. I want to call you all brother and sister, not enemy. I want to be at peace with each and every one of you people here. But also, we are called to be spiritual peacemakers, because even if you have already accepted Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, there are people out there who have not. There might be people here tonight who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And there is conflict between their heart and God right now. So we are not only peacemakers here on this earth, but we are spiritual peacemakers called to serve God by making peace between him and those who remain lost. And last but not least, when you have begun to see all of these things in your life, there's the bad news. Now, if you look at all of the messages that Jesus gives, a lot of people are encouraged by the miracles that he did, by the way that he's changed people's lives for the better in a way that nobody else at that time could. But then Jesus says something hard, something that's hard for people to apply to their life. And it oftentimes in scripture will say, and the crowds were discouraged and they went away. So this is that hard thing in Jesus' very first message. It says that when you begin to live a life as a Christian, you will face persecution. And that's just unfortunate. I don't want to face persecution. But in scripture it says that when we face persecution, it is an opportunity for us to grow in our strength and our relationship with the Lord. It says, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Circling all the way back to where he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom in heaven. Once you take that first step, once you admit your imperfections, once you mourn the condition of your heart, once you say, I need God's strength and not my own, once you say, God, I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, the persecution will start to come. People will say, you one of those Christians now? You go to church? You spent your Saturday night at Open Modica singing worship songs? Dude, why? You could have been at the brew, bro. You could have been doing something so much more fun. And we are blessed to live in a world where we can freely speak about our faith, where we can stand in this beautiful, open Grenadian air and talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it goes on to say, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. That's the kind of persecution that we face nowadays. I can't, I don't know what country everybody comes from, but I'm from the States, 
And in the States, nobody's trying to kill me because of my love for Jesus. We don't see that very often there. Every now and then, crazy person with a gun. But it's the insults. It's the falsehoods. It's the lack of understanding that stings, that, that hurts deep down when people make assumptions about who you are because of their perception of our faith. It's rough. It's rough. But I want to encourage you guys, each and every one of you tonight, that when Jesus returns, and he will return, you will be vindicated. People will realize that you were right to dedicate your life to Christ. You were right to be spending so much time at church. You were right to stand out here watching a beautiful sunset and worshiping Jesus' name. Because, see, after this message that he gave, Jesus went on to live a perfect life. He lived a perfect life without sin, something that only God could do. And yet he faced death anyways. Why is that? The wages of sin is death, it says in Scripture. It's something that we all have to face eventually because of our sins. But Jesus, who had no sin, faced death anyway. Why is that? Because he wanted to pay those wages on our behalf. So when you look at yourself and you look at those imperfections, you look at the past mistakes that you've made, know that Jesus has it covered. He will wipe the slate clean every single time you come to him in prayer, every single time you dive into scripture, every single time you are praising his name. He is wiping that slate clean over and over and over again, and when we pass, when we die, and God is asking us, why should I let you into my heaven, into my perfect, flawless heaven, a place without sin, we'll say, because Jesus lived his life flawlessly without sin, and he paid the wages of my sin with his death. Now Jesus rose again once already, he died on the cross, he was in the ground for three days, and he rose again to give us hope that he would return, and to give us hope that one day, we, his followers, will rise again as well. As the worship team makes their way forward, and we get back to just the beautiful music that they've selected for us tonight, I want to encourage anyone here who's not sure where they stand with Jesus to come and talk to any of the members of our prayer team, any of the members of our e-board. You can come talk to me. I'm going to go stand in the back so y'all don't have to like look over me as much <laughs> since I was standing right in front, but feel free to come talk to me if you have more questions about this Jesus, about what has he done for me already. Like, how can I get into this relationship? John, you use too many big words. Can you explain it more simply? Yes, I can. <laughs> so come find me. Come find any of our prayer members who are raising their hands right now. Come find any of our e-board who's out here in the crowd. They're going to raise their hands as well. We would love to talk to you about Jesus as long as it takes. Let's pray. Lord God, we invite you here tonight, Lord God. We invite you out onto this, this beautiful open modica here, Lord God. We thank you for that gorgeous sunset that you painted today, Lord. And Lord, as we go into the night tonight, we want to sing your praises louder and stronger than we have all night, Lord God, because you have saved us, God. You have lived a perfect life so that we don't have to, Lord God. So I just thank you. I thank you for each and everything that you've done for us, Lord God. And for so little in return. So God, I thank you and I pray that if anyone is out there, Lord God, that you would give them the boldness, Lord God to seek after you, God. That we can take that very first step and say, God, I am not perfect. God, I am poor in spirit and I come before you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for sending your son, Father God. For dying on the cross for our sins, Father God. So that we may be called the righteousness of God. So we lift your name on high today, Father God. We give you all glory, praise, and honor, Jesus, for you are worthy of all our praise, Jesus. You are worthy of it all, Jesus.
break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, oh break to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sunday I came to church and I said hello to Sister Arlene and she looked at me and she asked me are you okay? At that moment I told her yes and I'm fine and something within me during the service just told me just open up and you know just share exactly what's going on and I did and you know she reminded me that with prayer everything is possible. And she also shared a, a prayer and fast, a 20-day prayer and fast with me. I did it. And at the end of it, I felt rejuvenated. I felt better in myself. And something that, or a verse, or a couple verses that stood out to me was, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And this next song that we're about to do, just want you to reminisce on the words and just let it all out. If you want, you can go to one of our uh, prayer team personnel. They will be able to pray for you. If you're someone who likes to be in your own silence and just open up your heart to Christ, that's your time to do this right now. And not only right now, but when we're leaving here tonight, if the Spirit does move you, let the Spirit move you. So we're going to just sing this song here to proclaim the name of Jesus onto our lives. Over all our fears and anxieties, anything that is troubling us at this moment. And I hope it blesses your heart. Your 
Father, thank you for today, Lord. Just thank you for your presence just being here today and saturating this place. I, I pray that every person who was healed was touched and blessed by what you did here today. Thank you for the message that John gave, Father God, just explaining the character um, of you and telling us that we may not be perfect, but you are perfect, Father God, and we are made perfect in you. And Jesus, we thank you that um, you are continually um, helping us through this, Jesus. I just pray as we go on um, to our studies or ending the rest of the night, Father God, we continue in the spirit of joy um, and praise and worship unto you, Father God, um, and we continue this into Sunday and to the rest of the week and the rest of the term. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. One, two, three. Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The dimension of His name. The dimension of His name. The dimension of His name. Of his name, at the mention of his name, everything can change, everything can change. If you want to in this, you're gonna walk out broke. If you walk in broken, you're gonna walk out whole. Is that the mention of his name? His name is Jesus. 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 His name. 